I just figured out I was muted. <laughs> I'm Tim. I work for Golf Cart Garage. We come here twice a week, Tim, Tuesdays and Thursdays. And uh, we go over some golf cart related questions that we've collected throughout the week or the other team members have collected. We, we try to answer them, try to save some people some money. Uh, we've got a few questions here, so welcome to the garage. So let's get started. Question number one. just got a six inch lift for my G16 and the back end is two inches higher than the front end. Could I put shorter shocks on the back end? Well, uh, G16, that's a Yamaha. Yamaha, they use coilover shocks. I don't know of a shorter shock that you could put on the rear end of a Yamaha. There's a couple of things that you could do that, that I could, that I would, I would try if I really wanted to make sure that, that it was even. Now, you could take your spring off of your rear shock and maybe cut it a little bit and shorten, shorten the spring in the rear shock. You could do that. Or you could check your front shocks for sag. You know, a G16 is an older golf cart. So are you sure that your front shocks aren't sagging some? You know, they, they could be lower, so you might, it might just take replacing your front shocks and that would raise the front up a little bit, you know, just replacing them with some new ones. Because over time, you know, the front end of, of, of any golf cart, they do end up sagging and they do get a little bit lower. A lot of times you'll look at a golf cart that's got some miles on it. If you look at it from the rear, it'd be leaning to the driver's side a little bit. Well, that's because it spent a lot of time with one person driving on that side, you know, and it, the, the springs on that side get a little weak. Well, that's including the rear and the front, you know, it includes both of them. So you might think about doing that, you know, just replacing your front shocks and see if that raises the front up to make it even. Let's see. Question number two. I have a 99 EasyGo DCS TXT with a DCX controller and can't figure out where the A2 wire goes. I want to pull out all the batteries and put in a lithium set from you guys. Well, on a on a EasyGo DCS, the A2 wire from the motor goes to the B plus on the controller on a DCX controller. You've got two wires connected to the B plus on the controller. You've got the wire coming from the solenoid and you've got the wire, the A2 wire coming from the motor. They both go to the B plus terminal on the controller. And if you ever have questions like that, you can, you can always go to uh, alltracksinc.com, alltracksinc.com and look up a wiring diagram for a DCX controller and it, and it shows you right there. All right. Number three, my husband turned a 36 volt golf cart into a trackless train with three cars. He put LED lights on all the cars. The lights are hooked up to their very own separate 12 volt battery. When he accelerates, the lights on the cars flicker terribly while the LEDs on the engines are fine. He's ready to set the thing on fire. Not really, but he is frustrated. Any clue on what could be causing this? I've, I've had some similar electrical issues with uh, when I was trying to install a stereo on an electric car. Uh, it would accelerating would screw up the stereo. It make a it make some uh, static and noise and stuff. What I would do if I was you, I, just to eliminate what the issue is, just to completely figure out what the issue is, is I would take that 12 volt battery and try to move it, move it into different places and see if that can help your situation. Move that 12 volt battery as far away from the golf cart itself as you can. Like maybe put the 12 volt battery in one of, in the rear train or just, just move it around and even get a small 12 volt battery to help you out with the, with the location. Just, and see if that does anything, see if that changes anything. And I, I bet you might find that it will. You, you're getting interference, most likely magnetic interference from the motor. I mean, when you accelerate, there's lots of magnetic stuff going on inside that electric motor. So that, that could be what's happening. But in order to figure that out, just let's experiment with moving that 12 volt battery around. Let's see. Doesn't look like there's any questions yet. 
number four. I have a 2005 electric par car. While driving, it will every once in a while hesitate, but then I let off the speed, it starts back up. The other day it stopped. I had to push it out of traffic. Then turned it off, and when I turned it back on, it started working again. Well, just like normal, I would. My first question would be about your batteries. I, I would want to see about your batteries because you, it, it could be a couple of different things or a few different things. We need to eliminate your batteries as, as being the issue because that does sound like a symptom of dead batteries or a dead battery, one battery dead. Uh, it could be that. It could be you've got something that's overheating as you drive it. Uh, your controller could be getting hot. One of your cables could be getting hot. Depending on which electrical system you have, you could be different places. You could be getting hot. So it could be your forward and reverse if it is a uh, mechanical forward and reverse. If it's not mechanical forward and reverse, it could be your controller. Uh, this getting hot could be your solenoid. So, so feel for heat, feel for heat around your cables, feel for heat around your controller when it fails, you know, when you're at the point of failure. Number five. 1998 48-volt club car. At very low speed, golf cart performance is erratic. After the acceleration, after that acceleration is normal. Now the cart will only move a short distance and come to a complete stop and will not move again until it sits a while. Batteries are new this year and are fully charged. Okay, just uh, this is what I would do to tackle that one. First, I, would just, I know they're new, I know the batteries are new, but I want to see over 8 volts on every individual battery. So. Mark that off. That'd be number one. I want to see over eight volts on every one of your batteries. All right. So go each. You don't have to disconnect anything to do that. Just put your voltmeter lead on each battery and make sure that every one of them is over eight volts, like 8.2, something like that. Then I would inspect your V-Glide because the 1998 is going to have a V-Glide. Uh, take the cover off of the V-Glide and look at it and you'll see what happens as you push the accelerator pedal you'll see this wiper arm that goes up the V-Glide all right and it's going the wiper arm has a copper contact on it and the V-Glide has several copper contacts on it so as you push the accelerator pedal the wiper arm goes and slides across the V-Glide and goes through all those copper contacts uh, check that for normal operation first reaching the last contact make sure it's going all the way to the last contact but also look for discoloration in those copper contacts a lot of times that's how a v-glide burns up is if they get hot and they start melting things inside there they, the, the, their copper contacts don't melt but the plastic around them can melt if the v-glide's getting hot so and as if they get hot once they, they just continue to get hot again and it gets worse and worse and worse you eventually might have to replace the v-glide so I would check that next, make sure that that looks good. It should look almost brand new inside there. I mean, if you see any discoloration of the copper, like blue or green color on the copper, that's a sign of a tremendous heat that has gotten to it. And obviously, if you see some melted plastic, you know it's getting hot there too. That can cause your symptoms. Uh, your, and other than that, feel for heat around your controller when it fails too, like what, we're, like what I was talking about earlier. Let's see, Craig on YouTube. What's up, Craig? So good afternoon. Thanks for the info. Looking forward to the tip of the day. I do have a tip. I do have a tip for today. Oh, and also we're going to be giving something away too. So if in case you don't know, occasionally we give something away. Well, I've got something to give away today too. So you got to stay tuned to the end though for that. Let's see, number five. That was number five. So let me go to number six here in just a second. Number six. I have a 94 36 volt club car DS. The solenoid clicks and won't move. Okay, in a 94, you could have two types of electrical systems. You could have a resistor. I know they made the resistor type electrical system, 36 volt resistor club car, all the way up until the 2000s, the mid 2000s. Uh, pretty bulletproof design, but not very efficient. 
so you could have that type. If it is that type and the solenoid's clicking but the car doesn't move, then the first thing I would be looking at is I would be looking at the solenoid just to make sure because it's not 100% guaranteed that just because the solenoid clicks means that, that, that means it's fine. Most of the time that's the case, but not 100% of the time. You can have a solenoid that clicks that is still bad. That's what I'd look at first. And then next thing I would look at would be a broken resistor coil because in those old resistor type systems, there's, there's coil resistors, lots of them, they get red hot. Well, if one of them's broke, it, it, it's not going to regulate the speed, so we can't do that. After that, if that was fine, the solenoid's clicking, solenoid's good, your resistor coil assembly's good, there's only one thing left, that would be the motor. And it's very easy to do a motor test on a, on a series cart, because that, what we're talking about is a series wound cart. Uh, you got four terminals on the, on the motor. You, you've got a, either A1, A2, S1, S2, something like that. You got two A's and two S's, uh, what you do to do a motor test on that car, first of all, you disconnect all the cables off the motor. Disconnect all four cables off. Take one battery cable and remove one of your battery cables, one of your short battery cables. Because what you're going to do is you're going to mount that on the motor. You're going you're gonna to jump an A terminal to an S terminal. Any A terminal to any S terminal. You're going to make that jumper wire. Now you've got, still got two open terminals left on your motor. At that point, you're going to hook jumper cables to those two open terminals and hook the other end of the jumper cables to a 12 volt battery and the motor should spin. Then you can change polarity by switching your positive and negative on the 12 volt battery. Motor should spin backwards. So if it does that, then you know your motor's okay. But I think you'll very, it's very unlikely that it's motor, but it could be. It could be the motor. That would be the last thing I would check. Travis Lee. What's up, Travis Lee? I see you. Thank you for your show. Love watching it twice a week. Well, I appreciate you being here. Let me see. Let's see. Number, uh, where was I at? Broken resistor. Okay, number seven is where I'm at. Hi, can you tell me the way to wire an LED light bar to my golf cart? It has one of those Roy, Roy Powell lithium batteries and a voltage uh, reducer with some kind of hub with spaces to connect wires to already. Well, your, your light is going to have two wires coming out, a positive and a negative. Your voltage reducer is going to be connected to your Roy Powell battery. It's going to be connected to your Roy Powell battery off of one side of it. And off the other side of the voltage reducer, that's where your 12 volt connections are. It should be a positive and a negative on, on your, coming out of the other side of your voltage reducer. Now that's where your light that's where your light hooks to is, is to those two is to those wires coming out of the other side of the voltage reducer because that should be your usable 12 volts now they may have it run into a, a wiring harness that's already exists in the car i mean i don't know how they've got it run they may have it a complete separate wiring harness that your light goes to but there should be a fuse in that line somewhere also in, in either the positive or the negative line All right. Let's see. That was number seven, number eight. 1990s Melex electric four wheel, 36 volt won't go. Replaced solenoids and wiring. So that tells me it's got more than one solenoid. So it's a multiple solenoid system new batteries you can hear the solenoid click when the pedal is depressed no movement at all forward or back when the pedal is depressed voltmeter on cart drops to the bottom okay there you go that's there's a red flag right there horn works lights work cart was parked for many years but worked prior to being parked all right you said new batteries well if it's new batteries why would the voltmeter on cart drop to the bottom when you accelerate? See, that's the red flag that I was talking about. That would make me, uh, that would make me think, uh, that, uh, that you might be missing something there with your batteries. I'd love to see the volt readings because there's no reason that the voltmeter on the cart should drop to the bottom, uh, when you, when you, when you touch the gas pedal. If it's hooked up correctly and everything is fine, that, that, that shouldn't happen. So 
I, before I could go any further with trying to help you, I would have to get that cleared up to see, to see what's going on with that. See if, uh, this is what I would do. Don't use the voltmeter on the cart. How about that? Let's use, get you a separate one. Get you another one, like a just handheld voltmeter. Let me, so, let me show you so you can see what I'm talking about. Get you a separate one, just a handheld one, and put that on the batteries, the, the whole pack, you know, the whole 36 volt pack, and, and then touch the accelerator pedal and see if it does the same thing on your voltmeter, on the separate voltmeter. I'd like to know if uh, it does the exact same thing. All right. Travis Lee says, can the A2 wire go to the solenoid? Well, because there's two, yes, yes. The answer to your question is yes. Because there's two wires on the B plus terminal of the, of the Alltrax controller and the second wire goes to the solenoid, then yeah, theoretically, not, well, not theoretically, you could do it. You could put, you could mount it. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you could put it on the solenoid and it would be the same thing because both of those wires are going to the same connection. So yes, you could do that. Uh, I was just telling you, the, the person who asked the question earlier about the A2 wire, I was just telling them that in the Alltrax wiring diagram, it shows them both going to the B plus terminal on the, on the, the top of the controller itself, but that's still a B plus terminal, you know, on that solenoid, on top of that solenoid. All right, you too. We got, yes, me too. I always look forward to the tips. Well, not a problem. I'm glad y'all like it. If, hey, if you like it, like and subscribe, you know, and you'll get notified when we start talking about golf carts. I don't know, you know, it's funny how golf carts can be exciting. Let's see here. Number eight is where we're at. Well, we can, it's, this is the question we, we already did, but there's a couple of other things that it could be, but it definitely, I wanted, I wanted to eliminate batteries. Yeah, I was looking at my notes here on that one. Yeah, I would definitely want to eliminate batteries on that one before uh, we went anywhere. So let's go to number nine then. I recently switched from eight six volt batteries to three 48 volt Trojan lithium batteries. See that what they did, eight six volt batteries, that's a big 48 volt pack but you can get you know, a 48 volt single batteries and like from Trojan or some of the other companies and you can put three of them in parallel and you still have 48 volts. So that's what they did here. The resulting loss in the weight of the cart appears to have caused significant steering difficulty, especially at higher speeds, 25 plus. Would adding weight back to the cart help, perhaps by replacing a few of the previous six volt batteries disconnected or putting in a few sandbags in the open space where the batteries previously occupied. By my calculations, the cart is now 400 pounds lighter than before the battery switch. Any suggestions other than trying to get used to the bouncing about the road when driving 20 to 25 miles an hour? See, that's a, that's a good problem to have, is you, you lost 400 pounds on your cart and now your cart rides too stiff. That's actually a good problem to me. I mean, I think that's awesome because I can only imagine how much better your cart feels as far as performance wise. But yes, it had a lot of weight in it before and your suspension and everything your, and your steering and your front end alignment, all of that was tied into the previous weight. So you might, the first thing I would do, you, I mean, you have to understand when you took that 400 pounds out, that cart went up. It might not have went up a lot, but it went up some that could have affected your front end alignment. So on a golf cart, I would, the first thing I'd do would be realign the front end. All right. After that, re realign the front end to one eighth inch toe end. I mean, if you don't know what that means, look it up. It should be easy to find one. You want one eighth inch toe end like that. Just one eighth inch. That's almost dead even, you know, dead even would be zero toe end, but just one eighth inch toe end is very, very little toe end. That's what a golf cart should be. Uh, now, the next thing I would do, since you had eight six volt batteries in there, that was a lot of weight to begin with. So is it possible that it, your cart has heavy duty leaf springs on the rear already? 
Because if it does, and then you took 400 pounds out, then yeah, that would definitely ride stiff. You might end up going back to stock leaf springs or look at your leaf springs and see if you can remove some of the leaves. There are a lot of leaf springs you can get. You can remove a leaf or two and make it a little bit softer spring in the rear. But take a look at your leaf springs. That would be the only two adjustments that I could think of. But like I said, I think that's a cool problem to have is uh, 400 pounds lighter and your cart rides rough now. Let's see, Travis Lee, thank you for all your help. No problem, Travis. Thank you for participating in the chat, man. Let's see. Let me check something right here. Nothing over there. Let me check something here. Number 10. 92 Club Car FE290 Kawasaki Gas. When driving, there is a momentary screech. The cart slows a bit, then keeps going. This repeats as long as you drive the cart. When I put it in service mode and in neutral, as the motor revs, it screeches and the cart tries to move backwards. And put bearing with a question mark. Let's see here. Usually, when someone describes, when they come into my golf cart shop and they describe a gas car as having a screech, it has something to do with that starter belt. Okay, that starter belt can make a noise. I've seen it many, many times. It can make a screech noise. But what it is, it's just a little bit of slip in the pulley. And sometimes all it takes in order to get that out is just a... Uh, tightening of the starter belt you know you just tighten the starter belt a little bit that starter belt on that motor needs to be pretty tight in fact it a little bit it's almost like it's uncomfortably tight when it when it's set to where it needs to be i've always thought that it felt you know too tight when it's at the right spot but if you go too loose it will that starter will slip inside that belt and it will make a screeching sound now what could be happening with you is every time you let off the gas and hit back on it could be it could be slipping in there just for a second and making that sound in my experience, a bearing sound, you ask, could it be a bearing? A bearing sound was more of a metal to metal kind of sound, like a grinding. I would describe it more of a grinding, but everybody describes something a little bit different in different ways. But I would describe a, a bearing as a metal to metal, like a, when a motor bearing goes out on an electric car, you wouldn't believe the amount of racket that that can create. When an axle bearing goes out, you, it makes a lot of racket, sometimes even more so when you turn one direction or the other depending on which axle bearing has gone out. So in your case, I would be looking at that starter belt and see if you can uh, determine if it's that or not. Uh, crank it in neutral and watch it and see if you think that belt, that uh, starter is slipping or that pulley is slipping just a little bit, making the sound before it, it, catches, before it catches on the motor. <laughs> Craig said you could get Lizzo to ride uh, around along with you and then your steering problem is solved. I think he's referring to the guy who lost 400 pounds on his cart and now his, now his cart drives funny. <laughs> Let's see, Travis Lee says, what lithium battery for a 36 Ford golf cart? Uh, I think you meant 36 volt golf cart you guys sell, would you recommend? Well, we sell, we sell a couple of different ones. We sell uh, allied lithium batteries. Uh, Go to our website and just plug in lithium and, and see what comes up. And there's a, Allied does it in a, they do it in a, in a different way than, than some of the other companies. Allied, you buy like, a, like, like this other person that did earlier, you buy three 36 volt batteries, or you can buy two. You could buy just two 36 volt batteries from Allied and then you hook them into, into in parallel. You can do it that way, or then you could add a third one and hook those into parallel, you can do it that way. Or Allied has another line of batteries where they can sell you one single battery and you just pick your amp hour that you want. You uh, like pick 105 amp hour or something like that. Just That is directly related to how much range do you need. And obviously the more range that you need uh, in your golf cart, the more money you're going to have to spend. So they offer it in two different ways. You can get a very low range setup for a, a lower price, or you can get a higher range setup, you can, or anywhere in between. You know, they have a system in place where you can get anywhere in between, just depending on how much range. If you need, if you need 50, 60 miles, 
of range before you need to recharge your card. If you need that much, you're going to have to spend some money to get the, the higher amp hour set up. If you just need regular golf cart range, it's probably about just regular lead acid. We're talking somewhere between 15 to 20, you know, some, something like that. If you just need that kind of miles, you can get into lithium nowadays for a pretty good, pretty good price. Let's see. Let me check uh, over here. And over here, everything looks good. Let's see. Yeah, that was number 10. That was the last regularly scheduled question. So, here we go with the magic coupon. Get 5% off any parts you order from Golf Cart Garage by using coupon code TIM6. This code expires on January the 8th, 2022. Travis Lee, my wife Lauren loves you. She is my pit crew. Looking forward to watching you on Thursday. Cool. That's cool. It's always nice to have people that love you. All right. Let's see. Everybody get that about the 5% off coupon code, right? Tim6. Code expires on January 8th, 2022. 5% off at checkout. All right. So that's fixing to go away because I'm going to give the tip. All right. This week's tip or this day, this tip is, is this. I had a, a question about battery cable. Uh, I get the, I get this question a lot. Battery cable continuously getting gunk on the end, continuously getting corrosion on the end, just over and over. I clean it off and I get more and more corrosion on the end. Well, the first thing to help stop that, okay, the first thing you do is you do not overfill your batteries with water. That's one mistake a lot of people make. They put too much water in their batteries. And what happens after you put too much water in your batteries, you plug the car in, the water level rises a little bit. If you're if you already filled to the top and the water level rises, then you're gonna, the sun's gonna come out. And that's acid, that's not water. So it's gonna come out and it's gonna go to the nearest metal connection, which is gonna be one of your battery posts. So make sure you're not doing that Make first. That's the first thing you do. Now, also, if you if the cable is repeatedly getting corrosion, you're having to clean it all the time, it is very likely that the corrosion has already worked its way under the insulation of the cable. So, and you can't clean that. You can't get to it. You can't get to it if it's, if it's working its way through the insulation. And eventually that cable is going to not pass the amount of amps that it needs to. It's going to create a hot spot on that terminal and it could melt that terminal, literally melt that terminal and catch your golf cart on fire and mess your whole world up. So, uh, don't overfill your batteries. And if you do have a repeated cable, replace that cable. Just replace it with a new cable. I mean, cables can go bad. Just a wire just sitting there can go bad. And it's because of corrosion going inside the insulation. So just remember that. That was today's tip. Let's see. That looks like it's about it. No questions on Facebook. Uh, let's see. I want to thank everybody for participating in the chat. Thank you for all your questions. And uh, I will see you on, let's see, I will see you on Thursday, uh, day, day after tomorrow. Uh, if if you, you don't remember who I am, I'm Tim, and I'm a member of the Gearheads on Demand service that we offer at Golf Cart Garage. You can actually schedule an appointment to speak with me one-on-one -on -one or one of the other technicians at Golf Cart Garage. Uh, if you're interested in that, click the link in the description. That will take you to the scheduling page. And uh, you pick a time that's convenient, and I'll be there. I'll, I'll be ringing your phone. And we'll decide if we need to do a just a regular phone call, or you can decide that when you schedule it, or, or a video call. That's up to you. Sometimes a regular phone call is all it needs. That may be something that I've seen before. All right, that's it. Garage is now closed. I'll see you all Thursday.